With the current controversy of violence in video games, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to discuss how video games can actually teach us morality. Uh, more specifically, how they can actually help us understand ourselves a little clearer. So what better game to explore this than my favourite game, Persona 5? A game about a couple of average students outcasted by society working together to steal the corrupted hearts of those in power. The game isn't exactly shy about what stance it has regarding what morals you should have basically treat everyone with respect and be a good person. However, there's a deeper meaning that's consistent to the very end, something deeper than what the main game's actually about. Obviously, messages are completely subjective. You might have your own understanding of what this game represents. That's what makes it such a personal experience, because it relates to you. You never know, people might feel the same way as you, which is why I'm really making this video to share what the game represented to me. So to even know what this life lesson is I'm talking about, we first need to find it within all that wholesome content. So grab a cup of tea, relax, and let's learn the life lesson of Persona 5. Persona 5 features a wide variety of mechanics from turn-based combat to basically a life simulator. While the world of Persona has always been a fantastical take on reality, it closely parallels just that, reality. For example, you play as some ordinary guy living out his life with his friends and going to school, things we can all relate to. It's that relatability that allows the Persona series to transcend just being some generic anime looking weeb game to something that resonates with the player. Whether it's studying to ace a test, living out your interest in coffee, making friendships with other people, or even infiltrating a person's palace in order to change their distorted heart to create positive change to them and everyone around them with a talking cat. Okay, so where do we look for this amazing life-changing lesson, Jack? Well, Margaret, I found three different key areas. Well, Margaret, I've taken three different key areas from Persona 5 that I believe the entire game is actually built around. Cognition, personal development, and confidence. Each area plays a role in what Persona 5 represented to me, and I believe it's supported by the gameplay features in those areas. So we'll talk about each one. If you think that sounds boring and you just want to skip to the end and find out what the lesson is, you can skip to this time. If you have a different perspective or would like to mention something I might have missed, please put it down in the comments below. The metaverse is a mirrored world of reality that holds two things, mementos and palaces. Mementos is an extension of the metaverse and houses the cognitions of the general public. Cognitions are how a person views the world, they affect mementos as a whole. The more morally corrupt a person is, the greater presence the corrupt form has in mementos. If they become too corrupt to be held within mementos, they are given the penthouse upgrade, their own palace. Palaces are basically corrupt cognitions gone wild. Joker and the team navigate palaces in order to restore the hearts of the corrupt by stealing their evil desires. Okay, but that's not exactly relatable, Jack. The most courageous thing I've ever done against demons is going for a shit in the dark. Literally, it has no connection to real life. Metaphorically, it does. Navigating the metaverse takes courage to explore the unknown, the courage to put anxiety and fear of what could happen aside in order to do what needs to be done, not just for yourself, but for others too. We see the characters become hesitant at times when confronted with the unknown, but they manage to push those feelings aside to continue fighting for what they believe in. Yeah, sometimes they debate about whether what they're doing is the right way to go about it, but that's natural. This is something I feel a lot of us can relate to. It's hard being courageous, and I feel the same. But sometimes we need to be, and all it takes is just a little practice and knowing when to be. The whole point of Changing Hearts is to fight for the best of humanity, regardless of how corrupt it's become. This sentiment alone speaks for itself and is fairly blatant in the game. It's the whole point the Phantom Thieves were created in the first place. In real life, this doesn't just relate to the morally corrupt people, it's those who need help in general. While you can't steal someone's corrupted heart in order to change their cognition, you can help them realise themselves what's wrong. Sometimes you can't help people and you can't force them to listen, and it's important to know 
when to step back and stop. It's about not giving up on people and doing what we can for those who are in need. What the game makes apparent is that the characters never condemn those of the hearts they've changed. These people have come to realise the bad they have done and want forgiveness. No, it doesn't change the fact what they did was wrong, but it's the fact they're willing to accept responsibility for their actions. In the real world, it's about trying not to condemn those who are trying to write forgivable acts. If we take this section and make it a more streamlined understanding of what cognition represents, it would be how you view the world determines how you inhabit it and how you act in it. So see the world for what it is. Between exploring Demonsville and stealing hearts, you live out a normal day-to-day -day life. There are so many activities available to the player, from buying equipment, to going to the cinema, to earning money, to hanging out with friends. With this in mind, the game introduces a mechanic called social stats, a set of talents such as knowledge, guts, proficiency, kindness and charm that you can improve by performing an associated activity. Performing these stats allow you to perform actions with friends that you weren't able to before, depending on whether that stat was high enough. Having this mechanic stops the life sections of the game from becoming too dull by rewarding the player with stat increases depending on the activity you choose. You see yourself becoming invested in the character's stats because the friend activities you use them for are so wholesome. You want to improve your kindness stat because you want to spend more time with Sojiro. <gasps> I see. It's weird because we sometimes forget to do things that benefit who we are. I think this part of the game reminds us to prioritise what builds who we are and the interests that we have. School in Persona 5 is blatantly the most relatable part of the game. The majority of us have gone to school and the majority of us know what it's like to do tests. Funnily enough, they're actually quite fun. They aren't annoying or consistent and if you get them correct you increase your knowledge stat. It's weird because Atlas took quite a mundane concept and somehow made it fun and rewarding by using gamification. By changing the interactions between the students to positive or negative depending on your answer, you become motivated to either keep amazing other students or be sure to take revenge by getting them right the next time. It enforces a positive outlook on education, learning and doing the best you can regardless of your motivation. Tying this with being given the choice of doing any activity after school, including studying, shows the importance of knowing when to take a break or when to keep going. We can only do so much work before it begins to affect not only our work, but our lives too. Balance helps us with that. I was reminded of this when I was playing it at uni and started to follow a similar pattern. Work during the day and personal time in the evening to enjoy some lovely, hot, steamy Sojiro coffee. Oh, Sojiro. Give me your trivia! Let me explain. The time of day also progresses by performing main activities, things like reading a book, brewing a coffee, hanging out with friends, or even sleeping. Because there's a minor consequence to performing main activities, it forces the player to be analytical and think about what main activity they should do or what they need to do before progressing the time of day. Would it have been better to hang out with a friend to get the next skill, or to work to earn money towards some expensive equipment? But if you have worked, you might have not seen that friend again for another couple of days. This style of progression forces the player to prioritise what's most important at that time, a skill which is also super useful in real life. Taking into account what each point of the section means in real life, you could say that personal development represents do what's best for you, look after yourself. Confidants in Persona are characters that you can form deep bonds with over the course of the game. Each confidant has their own set of skills that can be unlocked by hanging out with them. Confidants can be found in many places throughout the city, such as your friends, psychic ladies, or mysterious long-nozzled men. Deepening your bond opens up new opportunities and skills that can be used inside and outside of the metaverse. What confidants represents may seem a little bit more obvious uh, compared to the other things that we've talked about, mainly because of how relatable they are. Spending time with people we care about is what we naturally do. It's human, but the way the game uses it as a game mechanic is what truly makes it stand out. Without those relationships, you're weaker in the metaverse. You can't do as much as you could otherwise. There are some important abilities that you can't do on your own, and that's indicative of real life too. Sometimes we need help. This mechanic represents coming together, uniting to overcome something regardless of how big or small it is. These friends stick together no matter what. 
they're there for each other when they need it. Now, real life isn't quite as rose-tinted as that, uh, but what it means can still be related. We all need someone there to help us when we need it the most, whether it's friends or family. We are stronger when we have people we can depend on. That sentiment alone is enough to take away from this game. If you think about it, Persona has always been the original strand system, whereas Kojima-san has branded it, and Kojima Productions are developing a practical implementation of it with real people, Persona has been the theory to that idea. The idea that we can be more as long as we all come together, and that is exactly what Persona has been teaching us from the start of the series. On a side note, we'll actually be doing a Death Stranding livestream and Let's Play when it comes out, and if that's something you're interested in joining in on, uh, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when that happens. Anyway, understanding what confidants are and what they mean, you could assume that it represents Form relationships with genuine people. Enjoy your time with them. Now, if you actually sat through all that, then I applaud you because that's some dedication. And thank you so much. Half the views I would usually get would have, um, would have turned off by now. But now it's finally time to put it all together. And that's basically how my dog fell in the meat grinder. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't even see you there. Uh, me and the rest of the guys, you, you know, the ones who actually watch the video. Uh, we were just having some harmless fun. <laughs> uh. Anyway, um, throughout the video we looked into three areas that Persona 5 seems to have built itself around. Cognition, how you see the world. Personal development, how you respect and look after yourself. And confidants, the relationships important to you. Each of these play an important part in the bigger picture. Jesus Christ, Jack! Can you not just tell us what it is? Well, if you take what we've learnt from each area, it tells us something that we shouldn't forget. It reminds us of what we should strive to be. Persona 5 isn't really a game about changing society for the better using mystical powers and a talking cat. It's not even really about changing the corrupt or negative cognition of others. Yeah, that might be what you physically do, and it's what the story is about, but it's a lot more than that. It's about how you view the world, how you act in the world, and how you treat others in the world, because who you are affects everyone's cognition of the world. In other words, become the persona you want to be.